Welcome to the Live Leadership Podcast with myself, Leela Singh. All things coaching, career and personal branding. This podcast is for ambitious career professionals like you, wanting to create a life of choice and freedom, to be, do and have more through overcoming limitations, to develop new perspectives and insights and to redefine your success, be that in work, health, relationships, and so much more. Hi there, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome to Live with Leela. My name is Leela Singh, and I'm a leadership, career, and personal brand coach. And my mission is to impact 100,000 people's career trajectory beyond what they believe is possible. Why? Because I am passionate about helping you to realize what is truly possible for you when it comes to your career and your life. How do I do this? Through harnessing your leadership potential. I coach high achieving, ambitious and driven mid to senior level career professionals, typically within the technology industry who are looking for promotion to achieve peak performance and a standout personal brand, all while showing up as the best version of yourself. The topic of today is setting your Q2 compass for success. Why am I talking about this? Because we're in April. We've already had an entire quarter of a year pass us by. So my question to you is, so what have you accomplished? What have been your wins over the last three months? And before you say absolutely nothing, I'm sure that is not true. Why? Because often what we tend to do is we focus on the things that we didn't do, what we don't have, where we haven't progressed, all of the negative things. And that's our natural human behavior. That's where we focus on. That's where our brain goes. And often it's so easy to overlook the the wins and when I say wins they could be tiny wins a little bit of progress moving in the right direction so whatever that might be for you is really I invite you today to slow down grab a pen and a paper and just spend like 20 minutes today or during the coming week reflecting on the last quarter and just checking in on yourself to look at okay ask yourself what has gone well and acknowledge what has gone well and celebrate those achievements. Like I said, however big or small. Why am I saying this? Because the more that we focus on the wins, the positives, the baby steps that we have made, the progress, the more we will start to see and create that growth, that progress, those achievements, those accomplishments. When we spend our time focusing on all the things that haven't worked, that Uh, we don't have yet or just aren't working and not learning from them or enabling ourselves to propel forwards this is when we we limit ourselves and we either slow down or simply don't move forward at all and it can of course also impact our mood our motivation levels our um our enthusiasm and our energy to be doing something when we feel like we're just not getting anywhere So this is why it's really important to recognize even the small steps that you have made. And here's the thing, too, that's really important for you to remember. No matter what has happened, whether you've made baby step progress, no progress at all, or you've been flying forward and smashing it out the park. This is not about beating yourself up. This is about recognizing, simply acknowledging and reflecting upon where you are and what you have achieved. Then we can look at the lessons of what's not working, what's got you feeling stuck and enabling you to then get past that to move forward. It may even be for you right now that you you're finding yourself just drifting and you're like, how are we even in April? And I've done nothing this year. I've achieved nothing. I've not progressed in any way in any area of my life. Now, I can assure you that is untrue because, as I said, there will be some small baby steps if you look really hard to see what you have achieved. Possibly, however, you might be feeling stuck. 
and not knowing which way to go. It could be that unexpected things have occurred over the last quarter, which were completely unplanned, which has meant you've had to take a different direction or focus on something else. And that's OK, too. The purpose here of this session today, setting yourself up for success, is asking yourself the powerful questions will help you to move forward, irrespective of what has occurred in Q1. And what I want to ensure is that you're not just simply feeling like you're going through Groundhog Day and it's the same thing over and over and we pass through Q2, then we're in the second half of the year and you feel like nothing's happened, nothing's changed, there's been no progress and you, st you just give up altogether. We do have bad days. We do have days, even weeks, where we maybe not don't progress or do anything based on the goals that we'd set ourselves. I can vouch for that. I had um, almost three weeks, two full solid weeks in over January, February, when I was really ill with COVID. I was in bed and all the grand plans I'd had, particularly in my business and around my health goals, just had to be put aside because I couldn't do anything. And that happens. That is life. We all have things that occur, obstacles or, you know, situations that arise unexpectedly that are out of our control. However, it's what we do with that is the lessons learned or it's the, the recalibration that will then help us to continue to still move forward. So I want to invite you to go through a few steps today. So take some notes on this. And I want you to go away from this session and actually spend some time on this because I'm going to go through this fairly quickly for you to so grab a pen and paper, make some notes or come back and watch this again. And what I'd like you to do is spend that time really, first of all, reviewing. I'll take you through these steps. Number one is review, review Q1. So look at both your personal and your professional wins, your achievements. In other words, ask yourself what has gone well. That is the question to ask yourself. And if you sit there and think, oh, my God, everything just feels like overwhelm. Well, what I invite you to do is on that piece of paper, break it down into the different areas of your life that are your priorities that are important to you. Because when you break it down piecemeal, it makes it easier to focus on one thing at a time and look at that and think, OK, what went well when it came to my career, to my work? What went well when it came to my health? And like I said, if you feel like you had a big goal in that area, but you've not moved forward at all, look for the small wins. Look for the little bits of progress, those baby steps. It could be a small improvement. It might be you you gave up drinking fizzy drinks or stopped having sugar or you did something for Lent. I have a lot of friends who gave up things for Lent, some alcohol or meat and so forth. So think about those. Those are all steps potentially in the direction of your bigger goals. So break down that list of the areas of your life that are important, such as career and work, your health, your relationships, your family, your um, your friend circle, your hobbies and interests, perhaps your environment. Maybe you're thinking of moving house or um, doing some work on the house or decluttering or whatever it might be. All of these different areas of your life, break them down. Perhaps your financial stability. Maybe you were planning to do some investments or look into what options there are or, you know, setting up an ISA or looking at your pension or whatever it could be for you when it comes to your, your financial stability. So identify, let's say, five core areas or priority areas in your life and ask yourself for the last three months, what has gone well? What, where have you moved forward? Where have you made a little bit of progress? And if for any reason you're struggling with this, what I tend to do, because I'm, I'm one of those people who as soon as I've done something, I forget and I move on to the next thing. And I recognize that's not healthy. And here's the thing. The newsletter that I publish on LinkedIn every week, check out the one on Friday. I'll pop the link in the post shortly for that. But do subscribe if you haven't. Check out the edition I put because I thought, let me just put a little bit of only March reflections. And I sat here and I thought, OK, what happened in March? And the way I do this is I pull up my calendar because it then jogs my memory of what's happened during the month or the quarter. And I really surprised myself at actually how much had occurred during the month that was really good, that was really positive, that was some element of progress or a win 
or an achievement for me. And that's both in work and in personal. So, so that's an approach you could take is to look at your work calendar, your one the one you have on your laptop or on your phone, to just jog your memory of the things you've been doing over the last quarter. And it's really important to do that. Why? Because as I say, we naturally tend to focus on what we haven't done yet, what we don't have in place, the, the lack of progress in a particular area. And we often forget to see the wins. And again, some of those wins may have been completely unplanned, unexpected, but they came about in a way that actually you want to just slow down and recognize that and appreciate and acknowledge that for yourself. And more importantly, celebrate. Find small ways to celebrate as well. So that's the first part of this is a review of the quarter. The second thing I invite you to do is to reflect on your areas for improvement. So let's say you've got these five areas that you've identified in your life. Think about maybe start with rating yourself on where you are right now on a scale of one to ten. So let's take your health. Maybe you feel that right now your health is at a five and you'd like it to be an eight over the next quarter. So then now you're able to create that gap and identify what's in the gap, which will help you to drive your your intentions, your milestones that you're going to set yourself and the goals to enable you to get to, to move towards that eight. And by the way, it doesn't have to be go from a whatever number you are now to a 10, right? Be kind to yourself, be realistic. And also remember that a 10 to you could mean something very different to what a 10 means to me. I saw um, a former colleague from HP who, who posted, um, I saw over the weekend, that she's doing an Ironman in a few months time. And that just blows my mind because I think it's so, so inspiring. Maybe for her, that's a 10 out of 10. For me, I have my 10 out of 10 and that's not even running a marathon or an, doing an Ironman, right? For me, it's just optimal health, knowing what I'm capable of and achieving that and feeling fit and strong, energized and healthy. That for me is a 10 out of 10. I am not interested in pursuing an Ironman um, at this point in my life. That may change, but right now, for me, I know what my 10 out of 10 is. For somebody else, it could be running a marathon. It could be running 10 Ks every week. You know, whatever it might be, it's very personal to you. So please don't compare yourself with anyone else. Just be you, do you, and remember that every day is day one. And I'll explain that a little bit later. So think about what your personal goals are and look at your where you would rate yourself right now on that scale of one to 10. And even if it's OK, I'm a five. How do I get to a six? What can I do? Maybe you were a five in December and now nothing's changed. Let's use health as an example, because it's a common one for a lot of people as a, as a goal or a priority. So if you think you were five in December, now you're at the end of March, beginning of April and you're still a five. It's OK. So be kind to yourself and say, right. What needs to happen for me to become a six out of 10? And that could simply be improving your nutrition, cutting out sugar, for example, or um, drinking less or no alcohol. Um, it could be cutting out meat. It could be um, going for a walk every day, maybe improving your sleep patterns. Again, it's really personal to you, but take the time to get clear on what that looks like for you. What will get you from the number you are at now plus one what needs to change so if you feel overwhelmed when it comes to looking at your life and where you can make improvements and feeling that you're just not moving forward at all break it all down to reduce the overwhelm pick five areas of your life that are your priorities for example you know if it's not health it might be your work maybe you're looking to move company or get a promotion what is it you need to do how would you rate it right now what will make it a you know, a six or a seven or an eight or a nine, even a 10. What needs to change? What do you need to do? And how can you, you know, um, schedule that into your day to day so you've got the time set aside to help you to move forward? So this is what I mean when I talk about looking at the areas for improvement. Take each of the priority areas of your life and consider where you're at. And again, personally and professionally and what could be even better for you? What would you like to see change in your area of health, for example? And then set priorities. What's truly important? Because you might have those five areas and you might feel that, let's say all five of them right now are five, 
and you want to get into a six or seven by the end of um, Q2. OK, that's great. But is that realistic? And if you're struggling, thinking I haven't got time to do all of that, then you have to prioritize. So remember to think about what's most important and why. And the reason I keep mentioning health is because I see health as our greatest asset. And it's the one thing that filters down and impacts every other area of our life, which is why for me, it is a priority right now. And I recognize that for myself, it might actually be something else for you right now. There's no right or wrong answer. It's not about what I'm doing or what anyone else is doing. It's about what's important personally for you. So be true to yourself and ask yourself, what is truly important for you right now in your life? Which areas of life are most important? And it could be three and you just park two of them and say, actually, I'll deal with that in Q3 or Q4. But right now, these are the things I need to be focusing on. So rate yourself and then rate yourself as to where you would like to get to over the next three months, remembering to be kind to yourself and realistic, but also having that element of stretch, the stretch goal, or the element of pushing yourself a little bit to move forward, to make that progress. Also, another part here to consider is a little bit of self-reflection. So take some time to reflect on your past actions, your behaviours and maybe your decisions that you've made. So let's say health was a priority for you at the start of the year. And then you start, you slow down, you start going through this process and recognize that actually you haven't really done a lot to move forward or nothing's changed or you know you're capable of doing a lot more, but you just haven't put, put the time and effort into doing it. That's OK. The question now becomes, ask yourself, what stopped you? What was it that stopped you from taking that action? Was it you didn't prioritize it? You didn't schedule it into the calendar? that you would rather go do something else, go hang out with your partner or your friends, you know, with your family, whatever that might be. And it's OK. This isn't about beating yourself up. It's about recognizing your habits and your behaviors and bringing this into your self-awareness, because when you do that, that's when you get to recognize that now you've got a choice. You can continue what you're doing, what you've been doing. And as the saying goes, having the same result. And if you're happy with that, then that is OK. If you're feeling frustrated, if you're feeling unhappy or dissatisfied with where you're at in a particular area of your life, then you do really want to look at, OK, why was it? What was it that stopped me doing something that I had set myself a goal to do? Why did I not take action? Why didn't I implement? Because oftentimes we know what we need to do. I've heard this said so, so often, whether it's career, whether it's health. It's like, yeah, we know what to do, just not doing it. So really like slow down and check in with yourself. Is it procrastination? That's a great label, procrastination. But the reason is that now you want to delve deep into that to understand what is causing you to procrastinate. Is it fear? Is it fear of failure? Is it fear of success? Is it fear of what other people will say? Is it fear of not feeling good enough or ready? Or smart enough? Whatever it might be, it's about really having or building, shall I say, that level of self-awareness of what is triggering you, what is stopping you, what is hindering you? Because once you have that information, when you're armed with that information, you can then make different choices. Or you can seek out help if needs be from friends, from family, from a coach, from a mentor, from a manager to assist you and support you, to maybe even have you accountable so that you've got someone when often when people are accountable to somebody else, they're more likely to take action. So understanding where you're at in your behaviours, in other words, you're reflecting on yourself and what you're doing, the thoughts that are coming up for you that stop you taking that action that you know is going to help you. Understand, seek to understand what is going in for go, sorry, what is going on for you in here that is actually potentially holding you back. Now that you're armed with that information, what am I going to do with that? What decision can I make now? What choices do I have? These are all the questions to be thinking about, to ask yourself. And then my invitation is once you've identified the areas for improvement, your priorities, whether it's one area, whether it's three areas, whether it's five, it doesn't matter. It's entirely a personal decision. You want to start thinking about how can I create that focus time to work on this? What level of commitment am I going to give it? How consistent am I going to be? 
to enable me to move forward or to see progress and improvement. The next thing is to recalibrate. And what I mean by this is, as I mentioned earlier, it's often the case that things have occurred throughout the last day, week, month or quarter that were completely unexpected. We hadn't planned for, whether it's a sickness, an illness, someone close to someone we have to take care of, um, just something completely unexpected at work. You know, it could be anything. And those can often throw us those situations. So look at addressing any of the unexpected or unplanned occurrences during the last quarter. What I mean by that is, again, not beating yourself up about it, but looking, okay, how did I respond to that? How did it actually impact the goals I had set myself? Are those some of the reasons why maybe I'm not where I'd hoped to be by this time in the year? What could I have done differently? What could I do better the next time? And actually, if it's something that was just completely out of your control, you like you just had to stop. For example, like me having COVID, it was like I had no choice but to just stop, which means I was on the back foot after almost three weeks and then kicking myself and then realizing there's no point in kicking myself. I just would get on with it um, and just recalibrate and, and sort of re redefine my plans for the quarter um, in line with the fact that I've lost three weeks of time in my business. And, and that's the thing we need to do. So rather than put our head in the sand and pretend it didn't happen or just hope we're going to be able to play catch up, which will probably never happen and is completely unrealistic, which will create more stress and overwhelm. It's face it head on. Look at what happened. Look at what has occurred and ask yourself, OK, what am I going to do about this? How can I plan differently the next time? What backup plans could I have in place or simply, OK, this happened. It meant I couldn't do A, B and C. And that's OK. So let me recalibrate now to look at what where I'm at now and what I want to put in place for Q2. Remember, this is not about beating yourself up or being mean to yourself. It's simply about understanding so that you can plan effectively from here. Ask yourself, what are the learnings I've had over the last quarter? What was unexpected? What was a great win that I didn't see coming? What was something I really struggled with? And from all of those things, what are the learnings that you've gained from that? And maybe a question that may be help, helpful for you is how can you adapt um, to those changes should they occur again in the future? Next point I want to look at is redirection. So where you've had things that maybe haven't worked out or have changed, which means now you've got to re, almost like redefine what you're doing or where you're heading is what is that redirection? What is it you're going to do based on the experiences you've had in Q1? In other words, what are the intentional changes that you're going to make to enable you to keep progressing forward? What can you do differently in Q2? And again, this can apply to one core area of your life or it could apply to a few. It's, again, a personal thing. For some people, they can manage like five different things on the go and keep them all moving forward. For some, it just simply creates overwhelm and procrastination and then nothing happens and they go into almost like analysis paralysis because there's too much to think about. So think about your own personal profile, your behaviours and what works for you. Don't. This is not about trying to do something that just doesn't work for you and have you in, in like that analysis paralysis. It's about understanding yourself and understanding what works for you effectively so you can have you can make that progress at your own pace. And that's what I want for you. So what can you do differently in Q2 compared to what you did in Q1? For example, let's go back to the health goal. It might be that in, let's say, December, January, you rated yourself at a five out of ten and you had some plans in, in mind of you want to do, you know, maybe you want to go back to the gym or go running or whatever sport you do, um, maybe do some yoga, whatever that is, right? It's like, I didn't do it. The whole quarter went by and I didn't do anything. Okay, that's okay. You didn't do anything. So now we're in Q2. Let's look at what we can do in Q2. This isn't about beating yourself up for what you didn't do in Q1. Think about, again, look at what was it that stopped me? Was it an occurrence that was out of your control that meant you couldn't get to, to, to go for a run? Think about it. Is it that you just have no desire to go for that run and therefore that's why you didn't do it? And if that's the case, what could you do instead? Again, this is, comes back to the realistic goals. 
If you're going to set yourself a goal of doing something and knowing you're actually going to hate doing it and then less likely to do it, that doesn't make sense. So look at things that you can have fun doing, you can enjoy. Maybe it's going for a walk. You know, as an example for me, it's not something I've naturally been doing all my life, but over the last probably two years or so now, or three years, in fact, I've started going for walks. And sometimes I will spend that walk maybe catching up with a friend on the phone. Sometimes I listen to an audio book. Sometimes I will just walk and just have time to myself in my own thoughts. And that works for me because I mix it up. I have different experiences each morning when I have that walk, depending if I'm speaking to someone or if I'm just with my own thoughts. But I really enjoy that now. But if you maybe you'd ask me five or 10 years ago, like, doesn't interest me to go walking because I used to be more of a gym person. Whereas now I don't do that so much. And actually, I really enjoy getting out into the fresh air in the mornings to set myself up for my day. That's a personal thing for me and I enjoy it. So it's easy to do. And you want to make these things easy. So it's not a case of having a negotiation in your head about should I, shouldn't I, because I really hate it. And I don't want to, but I have to. That's You want to have a good energy behind what you're doing. So look at things that are fun, that are enjoyable or make them enjoyable in some way, whether it is running, going to the gym, listening to your music or an audio book or a podcast while you're exercising that can make the time pass even quicker. Look for ways of doing that. A book I'd recommend actually is um, Atomic Habits by James Clear, where he talks about layering your habits. For example, when you go for a walk and listen to an audio book or a podcast, and I, I'm very guilty of saying I don't really read as much as I would like to. So what I do instead is I will listen to audio books a couple of times a week when I'm walking. So then I'm getting through some of the books I'm, I'm you know, learning, I'm developing, and that for me works. What else can you do to layer your habits so you're getting a few things done in, in one time? One thing I want to mention here is we're talking a lot about the doing and something I, I've talked about um, in more detail before, but I just want to remind you of is that if you are struggling with your goals and with moving forward and with seeing that progress, is to just slow down for a little bit and focus on who you're being, so your identity. When we look at goal setting, and again, James Clear talks about this in his book, so if you have the book to hand, check out chapter two where he starts to explain this in a lot more depth. I'm not gonna do that today, but I'm pointing you to that, um, that content because it's really valuable in explaining how you can set yourself up for success with your goals by actually focusing, first of all, on your identity. Who are you being? So, for example, with health, if you know you're not happy with where you're at right now, but recognize where it is you want to be. Identify with someone who is maybe in that place already and check in with yourself as, okay, who are they being to be able to achieve that level of health that you are aspiring to? Is it that they are committed to going to the gym every day? Is it that they're consistent with what they're doing? That they make good choices when it comes to their food? You know, again, this is really personal for you, but just slow down and think about who are you being in the moment when you're making certain decisions? Because when you slow down to that and recognize that actually that person that I want to be for my health wouldn't do what I'm about to do, eat the big, cream cake, for example, then you might make a different choice. So this is where having that, having clarity on your identity for now and living into that identity now will help to make these goals easier to work through. An example I'm going to give you of this is me with my health. And I had actually said um, about a year ago, I was saying, well, you know, I really want to, to get fitter and healthier, but I was still struggling to get to the level of consistency that I'm at now. Why? Because I didn't recognize, I didn't see what I was doing from an identity point of view. And actually, I, when I was asked, well, what's the reason that you want to, to get fitter and healthier? Because it will help with, for example, my, let's say, my confidence levels and how I look in my clothes. And what I realized is actually if I feel, if I choose, because I can choose, right, to feel um, not confident, I was going to say unconfident, not confident or confident. And by choosing 
to be confident now that's now my identity that actually was a switch for me that created the consistency because i know as that person who is confident i am the person who is going to be consistent with my exercise with my food choices and so forth to be able to improve and see progress when it comes to my health so think about who do you need to become to create the vision the success that you're looking for whether it's your health whether it's in work and your career whether it's with your family as a parent as a partner and so forth again atomic habits great book to check out and chapter two is where it starts to talk about this so i invite you to take a look at that now we, we talked about redirection so reset now for q2 set your intentions for q2 create clear and achievable milestones in other words if they need to be baby steps make them baby steps at least the way you can see yourself making the progress and also remember this isn't only about setting your intentions it's about implementation so look at how you in, in integrate and incorporate all of these intentions into your day-to-day -day so that you're actually living it and if you're thinking well baby steps aren't going to help me of course they are the compound effect another book i've mentioned before darren hardy's compound effect but great example of the little baby steps being done consistently will create that effect and have you seen the progress and the wins that you're striving for it might take longer than you would like but you know you're heading in the right direction and that is what this is about this is about consistent growth and development and improvement and progress so think about baby steps and how those compounding baby steps will get you to where you want to be and live into it again Think about the identity of who you want to become and be that person today. So live into that through your choices that you make, the habits that you instill and the behaviours that you exude. If you want to be that person who is top of their game when it comes to their health and fitness, then what choices are you making? What decisions are you making about going, whether it's going for the walk, the run, the gym, the swim, the yoga? and check back in with yourself slow down and just check back into is this decision going to move me forward or keep me still again it's little little steps to get you to where you want to be and something i heard in the challenge that i was on a few years ago fitness challenge was every day is day one and it's something i always hold by my side it's every day is day one why because we will all have bad days days when we just don't want to do anything maybe if you're not well for example or you just lost all motivation and it's okay so it might be you have a day when you do no exercise or you eat loads of chocolate maybe you did that over the weekend because it was easter that's okay today is day one recommit it's not about okay i give up now because i ate loads of chocolate for easter it's about oh, i did that i acknowledge that it's okay today is day one i'm back to whatever you know eating habits you did have that you know will help you will move you forward will help you feel fitter healthier more energized so every day is day one something else that i've come to realize has really helped me is if you've got a never-ending to-do list is try and create projects from that why because it doesn't it, it, it almost reduces the overwhelm a little bit because now you've got projects and little to-dos within a project but actually it becomes easier at a granular level to tick things off. They look less overwhelming to tackle particular tasks and therefore you feel um, more let's say, motivated to actually approach them and get things done. So think about projects where you can, for example, a work related project or a health project even and, and treat it that way and then have your little baby steps beneath that as the overall bigger area of your life i trust this has been helpful any questions i said do pop them in the comments and let me know and just think about the importance of taking the time to do what we talked about today whether you spend 10 minutes today tomorrow the rest of the week or take out an hour or so at the weekend to really look at all of this so that you have a plan in place and integrate it into your calendar into your habits so that you can make the progress that you want to any questions let me know have a great rest of the week and until next time remember to harness your potential 
elevate your performance and strive towards your growth and your development by showing up as the best version of you. Take care. See you next week. Thank you for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast if you haven't already done so. And if you enjoyed and gained value from today's episode, then do please leave a review telling us your key learnings and what you enjoyed the most. And do please share this podcast with your friends and colleagues so we can spread the word on life leadership, creating a life of choice, freedom and new possibilities. Connect with me directly on LinkedIn and if you would like to learn more about how we can work together, either DM me on LinkedIn or email me. All details and resources can be found in the show notes.